Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm gonna be putting up Fab Filter's $199 Beast of a Reverb up against Logic's free stock reverb, Chromaverb. So let's see if you can tell the difference between the two. I'm gonna play this lead melody twice with the two different reverbs on it. Try to guess which is which. But before I tell you, let's do one more example, but this time I'm gonna use a snare drum and put some room reverb on it. Okay, now I'll tell you, reverb A was the free stock plugin, and reverb B was the $200 reverb. If you got it wrong, I don't blame you. The best way to compare reverb is actually if you put it at 100% wet. So let me show you the snare drum, but with the reverbs both at 100% wet, so you're only getting the reverb signal coming through. That should make it more obvious. If we're just looking at sound quality, I think the expensive reverb sounds a lot better. There's some weird phasing issues going on with the stock reverb and some weird artifacts that you can hear. It just doesn't sound as clean and as professional as that FabFilter Pro R plugin. Let's do that same 100% wet test with the lead melody. But sound quality isn't the only thing you judge a plugin on. You also want to take a look at the functionality, the user interface, and of course, the price. Let's start by looking at the functionality, and I think you'll be surprised by how much functionality the stock plugin has compared to the expensive plugin. So you obviously have all the basic reverb controls in here, like decay time, pre-delay, stereo width, mix, all that. But one thing I actually don't like about this reverb is it only goes up to 10 seconds of decay time. And you're probably thinking, why would I ever need more than 10 seconds of decay time? Well, actually, I usually use really long decay times to make atmospheric sounds like this one. The fact that I can't do that with a $200 reverb plugin sucks. But the rest of the functionality here is really amazing. You have these really easy to use knobs up here. You can change it from dark to bright. This one here controls the modulation level of the reverb. This distance knob right here controls the reflections. So if all the reflections in the reverb are happening earlier, the reverb is gonna sound closer to you. And if they're happening later, it's gonna sound farther away from you. Then things get more interesting with the decay rate. That's gonna control if the reverb ends a little earlier or goes on a little longer than it's supposed to. But this whole blue EQ right here is controlling the decay rate at different frequencies. So if you want the high end of your sound's reverb to stop sooner than the low end, you can do that. So with that curve right there, the low end of the reverb is lasting a lot longer than the high end. And I've never seen another reverb plugin where you can do it with this kind of pinpoint accuracy. Then down at the bottom here, you basically have a fully functioning fab filter EQ. You can do up to six bands and drag them wherever you want, which is way more functionality than most reverbs have. The only EQ on a lot of reverbs is just a low cut and a high cut filter, and you can't control anything else. So this really lets you get rid of any harsh frequencies that you hear in the reverb. So you can just turn it to 100% wet,
can really dial in where those harsh frequencies are and reduce them. On the other hand, what I usually do is I have Valhalla Vintage Verb right here, and because it only has the low cut and high cut EQs, I just put a Fab Filter Pro Q3 after that, and I can do the exact same thing basically. But it's nice to have it all in one plugin. Now let's jump into the stock plugin Chroma Verb to compare the functionality with the expensive reverb. You could almost say this stock plugin has more functionality than the expensive one, but it just doesn't do these individual things as well. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this plugin has its own version of that advanced decay rate EQ on the main screen here. So this isn't controlling the output EQ. The output EQ is on this tab. This is kind of like a decay rate EQ right here. So if I want the highs to be dampened, but it's not as much control because you can see I just have two shelf EQs right here and two bands to choose from. So it doesn't have that pinpoint accuracy, but still it's impressive that a stock reverb plugin even has this function. And then like I said, over in this tab, you have a full output EQ where you can shape the sound of the reverb. And that's definitely helpful to have, but the functionality is kind of limited. Like this low cut filter right here, it can only go up to 12 decibels of slope. If I wanted that band to have a steeper slope to cut off more muddy low end, I can't really do that. So again, it's nice to have, but not nearly as precise as the expensive reverb. But you have all the main controls you need. You can control the modulation down here. You can control the stereo width right here. And they have this early late reflections knob, which is kind of like a distance control. And that's very similar to what the distance knob on this tab does right here. And that's where it gets a little clunky. Like I couldn't tell you the difference between this distance knob and this early late mix right here. I mean, I know there is a difference, but to me, it doesn't sound very different. Another example of that is when I move these size and density knobs around, tell me if you can really hear a difference between them at 0% and then both at 100%. I barely hear any difference between those at extreme ends of the spectrum, so that's not really helpful when I'm trying to shape a sound or change the way the reverb is acting. But I will show you two features that this reverb has that the expensive plugin does not have. The first one is the fact that it goes up to 100 seconds in decay time, and there's also this freeze function. So having the 100 second decay time, I can make those atmospheric sounds. Now I'll show you the freeze feature, which basically just freezes the reverb in time and continuously plays it forever. And that's exactly how I make those atmospheric background sounds like the one I showed you before. I've brought up the snare sound now to show you the attack feature that the expensive reverb doesn't have. So if you wanna lower the attack of the reverb, it really helps when you have sounds with hard transients in the beginning, like a snare. So that's at 100% wet, so it doesn't sound good, but it just shows you how it takes away that initial transient hit from the reverb, because you don't want that in there. So overall, the functionality is more similar than you would think. You just get a lot more accuracy and control with the expensive one. And that brings me to the user interface. This part is really all subjective and based off what looks good to you and is easy to use. But to me, the Fab Filter Reverb looks amazing and it's just so easy to use. So it's a clear winner in the user interface category in my book. The last category for comparison is price. This $199 Reverb plugin costs the same exact amount as a full copy of Logic Pro. So you could have Logic and all the stock plugins that come with it and all the sounds that come with it and all the functionality to make music for the same price as this one plugin. And that's why I would recommend if you're looking for a nicer reverb than your stock reverb, I would go with Valhalla Vintage Verb. I think it's like 50 bucks, so it's a way better deal. This isn't an ad or anything, I just use it all the time. And I always have my reverb on a send track, so then after that I can put Fab Filters EQ and shape the reverb however I want.
because within Baja Room, you see it's only the low cut and high cut filters. That way you can almost get the same functionality that you get with that other reverb. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you like this little unreleased demo clip I'm gonna play during the outro. Peace.